So Bob standing by. Today we're beginning our four-week Easter study, which will end right on Easter Sunday itself. This week's lesson is focusing on the coming king. We'll have the first uh, four weeks worth of a new memory verse, Romans 5.8. Bob will tell you about that in a moment. And we should have ample amounts of shenanigans, tomfoolery, and lunacy that's fit for the whole family. Let's get started. Romans 5.8 but here is how God has shown his love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. No one had to prove themselves to him before he gave away his life. No one had to live perfectly for him to say, Okay, now I'll sacrifice myself to save you all from your sins. His love for us came first. But here is how God has shown his love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Start going over that verse some this week. The next week, we can do some drills to practice it. Goodbye. Right now, I think it would be quite droll if we did a funny skit. Hmm, quite. Isn't this exciting, Raquel? Isn't what exciting? It's springtime, and you know what that means. Yes, we survived another winter without becoming buffalo wings for the big game. No, silly. Well, yes, that's true, but that's not the only thing. Then what's so exciting? Easter is coming. All the eggs we're laying are going to play a part in celebrating the story of Easter. Easter? Is that the day people get up and make Denver omelets? No, Raquel. It's the day people celebrate Jesus fulfilling his mission on Earth. Jesus, huh? Who was the guy? Some sort of secret agent? Secret agent? No, Raquel. He's the son of God. What? Get serious. I am serious. The story began at Christmas when Jesus was born in a manger. Then... Thirty-three years later, Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem like a king. I bet everyone was excited to see him. The people were thrilled to see him coming. They laid out their cloaks on the road as he rode past, and they waved palm branches in the air as people shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Wow! So Jesus was wearing a crown? No. Was he riding on a big white horse? No. Did he have on a fancy robe? No. Did he carry one of those stick things with the gold thing on the end of it? You know, that thing. That thing kings carry. The thing. A scepter? Yeah. No. No. Hazel, honey, forgive my ignorance, but this Jesus doesn't sound like a king. Why in the world would people cheer him and wave palm branches for him and praise his name? Because Jesus left his throne in heaven to live as an ordinary man. He gave it all up so that he could show the world how much he loves them. Wow, I've never heard of any king giving up his throne to show the people he's one of them. This Jesus must be a special king. He is, Raquel, and in the coming weeks, our little eggy babies will help the people Jesus loves celebrate how he came to earth so he could be their king. All right, coming up now, we've got the science egg experiment of the week. It's provided in the curriculum with a YouTube link, and the YouTube channel is The Dad Lab. Enjoy.
And now for a moment of silliness with Mr. Paul and Torso Bob. Hello, welcome to Bob's Ice Cream Shop. Hey, I heard you've got some seasonal specials going on. Yes, we sure do. Would you like to try our Easter Sunday today? Oh, sure. So it's like an ice cream Sunday with an Easter theme? Yeah, an Easter Sunday. I thought of the name myself. <laughs> Very clever. Sure, I'll try that. Okay, let's get some ice cream in there. Yeah. A little bit of chocolate. Mmm. A little whipped cream. 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 Whip cr okay, and the final ingredient an Easter egg. Ha <laughs> ha! Get your protein and never skip leg day, bro. Okay, step forward, please. Next in line! Is everyone excited for Easter? I bet all of you are just ecstatic about it. Pretty soon, we'll all be having an excellent time with our families, dying eggs and hunting eggs, and of course, eating eggs, both real and chocolate and candy-filled. It's an exciting time of year, and I hope your Easter is extraordinary. Oh yes, not only are the egg puns part of the curriculum, but I happen to find them to be delightful. Don't worry, I'm not going to egg up this whole message. I don't want to make you all exasperated, but it's no exaggeration that Easter is, except maybe Christmas, the most exciting time of the year. Easter is the Sunday when we remember that Jesus rose from the grave, fulfilling his mission on earth. Easter morning was the day everything Jesus did for us finally became clear and understood. Jesus, the Son of God, had laid down his life so that he could give us eternal life. Because of his death and resurrection, we can have our sins forgiven, and we can live forever with him in heaven. The Easter story begins a week before that blessed Sunday. It begins on a day we call Palm Sunday. This is the day when Jesus made a fantastic entrance into the city of Jerusalem. For many years, people had been waiting for a savior. They longed for a new king who would free them from the hated Romans. And they believed the Messiah, the prophets had long spoken about, would do just that. When Jesus arrived riding in a town on the back of a donkey, the people weren't just welcoming a, a great man or a preacher. Many people believed Jesus was coming to take his rightful place on the throne in Jerusalem so he could save them from Rome. The scripture is Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The people were only half right about Jesus and his mission. When a king entered a city in Jesus' time, he would ride on a horse or a donkey. A horse meant he was coming for war and conquest, but a donkey meant he came in peace. While many in the crowd wanted to see Jesus use his powers to cast out the Roman governor and the hated Roman army, Jesus had his sights set on another enemy. Jesus came to free the whole world from the enemy we call sin. Jesus may not have been the king the people expected, but he was the king they needed. He's the only person who could have taken our place and paid the price for our sins. Thanks to Jesus, we can have our sins forgiven. We can become subjects in the kingdom of heaven. We can one day go to heaven where we will worship him forever. Today we saw an unusual experiment with an egg. The people in the video inserted some candles into a hard-boiled egg, lit the candles, inserted the egg in the bottle, 
the egg slipped straight into the bottle. Not by any force of magic, but a simple trick of science. Do you guys remember how quickly the egg vanished into the bottle? Good, because I want that image to remind you of three things. First, I want the egg to remind us of how Jesus came to earth. Jesus was the Son of God. He lived and reigned in heaven even before his story begins in the Gospels. Then one day, when the time is right, God sent Jesus to earth on a mission to save us. Jesus didn't hesitate. Like the egg drawn into the bottle, Jesus was drawn to us. He came because he loved us, and he was willing to do what it took to save us from sin. Second, I want the egg to remind us of Palm Sunday. I want us to remember that Jesus came willingly to Jerusalem, where he knew he was going to suffer and die. Even as he watched the people waving palm branches, Jesus knew that in just a few days, their words of Hosanna would change to crucify. Jesus didn't hesitate. This was why he came, to save us from sin. He was ready to do whatever it took to be our Savior. Third, I want this egg to be each one of you when you hear the Easter story. How's that? Just as Jesus was drawn to earth to be our Savior, I hope all of you will be drawn to him. Jesus died to forgive your sins and give you a new life. Knowing this, how can we not race into his arms and thank him for all he's done? Jesus is coming. He is coming so that he can become the Savior of the world. Just as Jesus was drawn to us, may his love draw us to him. Lord, I just have this feeling of celebration in my heart reading this story where you ride into the city and everybody's cheering and celebrating. I can just kind of imagine the commotion of this group of people and so much joy in seeing you come into the city. Well, I think all the kids that are going to be watching this, they were with me last year when we talked about Easter and they know where this little donkey trip is leading Jesus to ultimately, to the cross. But that's not this part of the story. So let's just uh, dwell in the moment and enjoy the celebration as we can picture our king riding in and we got a victory to celebrate. Because we know what comes after the cross too, don't we kids? After the cross is the resurrection. That's the real victory. And we get to celebrate again at the end of this four-week series. So Lord, I can't wait. I'm going to enjoy this ride and the celebration that we have. I pray for all the kids listening to this, that if any of them still need to really take this story to heart and accept you as their Savior, that they'll start taking steps to do that. Amen. I have so many questions right now. All right, let's hop right into these here questions and answers. Our question number one is asking you, what city did Jesus enter? Chicago, no. He entered the Israel city of Jerusalem. What animal did Jesus ride on? He rode on a donkey, or the translation that we read said a colt. He rode on a donkey. Why did Jesus ride on a donkey? Do you remember the explanation? What did that represent when a king rode in on a donkey? Yeah, he wasn't looking for war. He was looking for peace. He was on a peaceful mission into the city. And really interesting. Check this out. In this Old Testament book called Zechariah, he's one of the prophets. Chapter 9, verse 9. He said this, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. An Old Testament prophet had said these things hundreds of years before Jesus. This is one of many times that Jesus did what Old Testament prophets said that their Savior would do. No fluke that he was fulfilling all of these prophecies. He was the one that they were expecting. So, as he rides in, what did the people do to greet Jesus? Yeah, they cheered, they carried on, they threw their cloaks on the road, they put palm branches on the road, they yelled, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They were just celebrating his presence there and celebrating who he was. Really awesome. So, 
We talked about him riding into Jerusalem and why was he on a donkey, but why did Jesus come to earth in the first place? He came at Christmas. He left at Easter. What was that journey all about? Yeah. He came to earth to be the only possible permanent sacrifice to pay for our sins. He lived a perfect life that none of us can live so he could be the perfect sacrifice. His death could mean something because he didn't deserve the death, right? So, that's it for the questions. Yay, good story. Time to wrap things up. Thanks for joining me for another episode, and please keep coming back for the next three lessons of our Easter study. Until next time, Parents, if you would like to view any past lessons or download materials to supplement this lesson, go to the church website at clevelandvineyard.com, click on Ministries in the menu, Kids slash Youth Ministries in the drop down, and finally click the curriculum link. That is where you can find all the videos. Past, present, not future. Haven't made them yet. But until next time, everybody, it's been real. Peace, love, we are out of here. This has been a presentation of Busby Productions. Ah!